Map fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at advanced editing in QGIS and we will be traveling by map to sunny Doncaster. To get the practice data and a helpful PDF guide for this tutorial, check out the link here or click the link in the description below. In this scenario, we're going to be looking at brownfield sites in Doncaster that have been earmarked for housing developments. And the first thing I need to do is find the housing development that I'm interested in. So if I right click on this and just open up my attribute table, I can select the land south of Jossie Lane. That's the one that we're after. And then I can use this little button to zoom map to the selected rows. If I close out of the attribute table, there we go. So you should be here and looking at this land south of Jossie Lane. Now, for our practical, we are looking at creating a little buffer down here. So it'll be a three meter landscape buffer zone for this housing estate. One thing I will need for this is a layer that I can use for editing. So I'm just gonna create a new temporary scratch layer. Click here and I will call this plan. The geometry type is going to be polygon and my EPSG is going to be the project. 27700 British National Grid. I'm not going to have any attributes in this. This is purely for editing. OK. Now, before we start any editing, I need to add a couple of toolbars. So if I right click in this space, I can choose which toolbars I would like. And I'm going to go with the advanced digitizing toolbar. And I'm also going to go with the snapping toolbar. And we'll look first at the snapping toolbar and get that all set up. Hopefully you're familiar with snapping. It's used in an awful lot of arts packages, as well as things like PowerPoint, for example, where you're lining things up, different objects within your slide. Now I'd like to set the snapping up. So I'm just going to drop this down and go to open snapping options. Here I can see all the layers in my project and what is snappable and also what type of snapping we're going to be doing. Now, I would like the plan, the layer that I've just created, and the suitable sites to be snappable. And I don't just want them to snap to vertices, which is any turning point or the corners in my layers. I also want snapping to be enabled on segments. So we can snap to a line or we can snap to a vertex. And I'll set that up for both of them. You can see how segment is now added to this. If I just widen this out, there we go. So you can choose what's being snapped to. Okay, with that set up, I'm going to make sure that my snapping is on. My snapping is indeed on. And then I can select the plan. And because this is a scratch layer, editing is started automatically. But if you do need to turn it on, if you have a different layer, you can just go up to the little pencil and toggle editing. I would like to make a new polygon and so from the toolbar I can go to add polygon feature and as soon as I activate this my cursor will change to these crosshairs and you'll see as well on the advanced digitizing toolbar that I have the option to enable advanced digitizing tools. If I click this it opens up a new advanced digitizing panel and this gives me all the options for my advanced digitizing. When it comes to the advanced digitizing panel, we have a number of different functions in here. And the first one I'd like to look at is construction mode. Now we can use the C key on our keyboard to toggle this on and off, or we can just click the button. There's a shortcut key, there's clicking the button. Now if construction mode is activated, if I start drawing around here, nothing actually gets drawn. I'm just creating points. And this can be useful because we can specify exactly what starting point or the next point relative to a certain point should be. Over in the advanced digitizing panel, you'll see there's a number of different values that can be added. So D is for distance and I can activate that and change it, edit it using the D key on my keyboard as you can see there. Below that we have angle. Again, I can use the A key and then we have the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So keyboard shortcuts work for all of those. Now you'll see once I've clicked and created a vertex in construction mode, I then have the option to use the parallel function. And I also have the option to use the perpendicular function. So I can access these by pressing once, that activates perpendicular, or if I press twice, it activates parallel. 
So it's just the P key on the keyboard pressed once or twice to activate these two. Now if I turn construction mode off, things just work as normal. I will start drawing a random polygon. In order to finish a polygon, once you've drawn it, you just right click as in normal editing and it will be drawn. Now let's remember our mission here. I need to create a three meter landscape buffer zone on the southeastern edge of this boundary. So just along this line. Now you can see when my cursor gets close to this line that this little pink blob appears and that means it's snapped to it. I don't want to draw anything yet. At the moment, I just want to set up the parameters so that I know that this boundary is gonna be three meters, a three meter buffer effective away from the southeastern edge. So if I press my C key, that will activate construction mode and that means I can click around without actually drawing anything. Now I'd like to use an origin, a starting point on this line. So because I've got snapping enabled, I can be confident that this is on this line. So I'll just do that afresh. There we go. All right, so I have an origin on this southeastern boundary. Now I'd like to make sure that this uh, buffer is three meters long and so I need a line that's perpendicular to the southeastern boundary. I'm gonna press P in order to activate the perpendicular mode. Excellent, but where's my line gone? This confused me so much when I started doing advanced digitizing. And with QGIS, you need to kind of indicate which line you would like to be perpendicular to. So if I bring my cursor down to this, you can see the perpendicular line appears. And if I left click again, that will allow me to start moving out along a perpendicular plane. Excellent. Now I need to make sure that this is three meters away from this southern eastern boundary. So if I just press D on my keyboard, that will activate the distance and I can type in three for three meters and hit enter. And that X has moved three meters perpendicular to my boundary. If I left click again, I know that that origin point is three meters away from this boundary. Good stuff. Now I'd like to further get some bearings and I want a parallel line to this particular um, boundary edge. So I can do that by pressing P twice, once, twice, and the parallel function is activated. And again, I need to indicate which boundary edge I would like to be parallel to. So I'll go down here and you can see the parallel line appears. Very good. Now I can move along this parallel line and if I just zoom in a little, I can make sure that I snap to this particular edge. Good. Now, if I wanted to turn off construction mode here, this would allow me to draw my first vertex. So I'm going to do that now. I will press C to turn off construction mode, and then I'll left click to get my first vertex. And you can see that this dotted line kind of changes to red because I'm about to start drawing. But what I would also like to do is make sure that I can draw where I'm going to, which is down here, but it needs to be three meters away. And we can achieve that again by using the parallel line. So if I press P, P to make it parallel, and then I can indicate which line I'd like to be parallel to, bring it down here, just zoom in to make sure that I'm right on the vertex, and left click again. And there we go, I have my line drawn. And then it's just a case of joining the dots. So I'll go down to this vertex, left click, and then I'll go up to the final corner, and I will left click again. And to finish my drawing, I will right click. And there we go. I have a boundary drawn on there that is a perfect three meters away from this southeastern edge. And that is how we can digitize in an advanced way. Now you'll notice that there are tons of other things that we could do with advanced digitizing up here. And we have some buttons that we've not explored yet on the advanced digitizing panel. So if you would like to have more tutorials on advanced digitizing, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below.
My colleague Richard and I have also been working on a contaminated land specific course for QGIS and it also explores our plugin that we have been developing to work with AGS data. If you're interested in that, then please do fill out the Google form to express your interest and you can get a discount on the course once it is launched. That is all for today. Thank you very much for watching and happy mapping.